All right, everyone, I think we're live. Um, my name is John Carvalho. I'm here with Roger Ver. Um, you guys know me as Bitcoin Aerolog. I have a company called Exotica.tv doing Bitcoin with uh, live streaming. And basically, you know, a lot of people wanted us to talk. So I asked you if you'd come here today to answer some questions I have, basically mostly about scaling. Um, everybody, here and, uh, I think we need more, more, more discussions rather than less. So thank you, John. Awesome. Um, everybody let me know if there's technical difficulty. I'll try to check the chat, but I'm assuming everything is fine at the moment. Um, okay, so mostly, you know, the main contention that between um, Bitcoiners and big blockers or B Bitcoin Cash, Bcash people um, is about scaling, right? Would you agree? Um, well, all right, right, let's let's go to that for a second. Why do you have a problem with people calling it Bcash? Uh, if I called you a four-letter word that you didn't want to be called, you wouldn't appreciate it. I don't know a single person that's a fan of Bitcoin Cash who wants it to be called Bcash. But it's uh, like, why do you get to call it call Bitcoin what you want, but I don't get to call it what I want? Words have meanings, and nobody that created Bitcoin Cash refers to it as Bcash. So if the people that created it and the developers and the miners and the people that are using it don't refer to that, uh, if I started calling you, you know, I started calling you honky and you don't like to be called honky and I can say, hey, you're a honky. And it's just like the same way people are jerks for calling Bitcoin Cash, Bcash. None of the people that support Bitcoin Cash want to be called that. But the, 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 the people that call it that, yeah, the, the people that call it that see it the opposite way too, though. They, they, they have the same feeling. They feel like they know what Bitcoin is and that it's an insult to have somebody else call Bitcoin Call, call their altcoin or fork coin, you know, Bitcoin as well, because it's there's only in the end, you and I both know there's only one Bitcoin. Like the first Bitcoin is the yeah, I guess I agree Bitcoin. on that point as well at this point. So how can you have? But you have to differentiate. Like the original one is still always going to be the one, even if one becomes more popular. It doesn't kill it. It doesn't get to take the name. So the title of the Bitcoin white paper is a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, right? Peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Core's version of Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. I don't think Bitcoin was ever peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, that's why we have nodes that nobody is connecting directly to each other. Okay, so you disagree with the title of the this Bitcoin white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto? That that's fine. I mean, I, I disagree, disagree with a lot disagree. of things in the white paper. I, it's not a gospel. It's not a Bible, okay. right? Like we have to I agree, it's not a gospel. And it's not a Bible, but I think it's pretty unfair for someone who disagrees with what's in the Bitcoin white paper to claim that this thing that isn't. Bitcoin white paper is the real version of Bitcoin. If you read the Bitcoin white paper and then you look at the characters. Well, no, 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 no. We know what the real Bitcoin is because it's a live network. We all can point at it. We all can agree on which one. It's we're Bitcoin Cash. About. Okay, we what agree. About. <laughs> no, Bitcoin Cash is Bcash. It's Bitcoin Cash. It's a whole new separate network of people, right? You just but admitted that the original the one core version of Bitcoin is not what's described in the original Bitcoin white paper published on Bitcoin.org and written by Satoshi Nakamoto. If the Bitcoin core version of Bitcoin isn't in line with the original Bitcoin white paper, I don't think it's fair to call that one the one and true and only Bitcoin. But there's no such thing as a Bitcoin core version of Bitcoin. The live Bitcoin network is there's has a protocol, and Bitcoin. and Bitcoin core is just a software repository of a compatible version of Bitcoin that works on that protocol, right? It's not it's not an actual like network. It's not a living thing. It's just a repository, as far as car, core goes. Yeah, you know? it's very important to define terms. So if we want to define Bitcoin core as just the, the GitHub repository that people can contribute to and the network of uh, nodes that are running that software, I, I think I'm fine with that definition. Then if you're fine with the fact that that's the definition of core, I guess why, if I why, can why, add one, why, one yeah. Go ahead. I don't think Bitcoin core is really an accurate description. I don't think it's the core of, of much of anything at this point. It's just a Name hey, but but if that's what they want to call themselves, shouldn't you respect them and let them call themselves that? It's been a really good branding uh, technique and marketing technique because people view yeah. it as, oh, this must be the core, as in the center of Bitcoin, and I don't think that that's necessarily true. Yeah, I mean, I think that the 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 it's a I I consider core to be a cooperative of developers. It's an open source project that anybody can contribute to, and you're only going to get your code changes in. Do you, can anybody contribute to it? So what what happened to Gavin yeah. Andreessen there? Who's the guy that Satoshi Nakamoto handed over the keys to that GitHub repository? He okay, was the nice enough true. to share. He, he never Satoshi never had a GitHub, GitHub account, so that's not true. 
Um, so he didn't hand over anything to Gavin. And Satoshi left when Gavin met with the CIA. So, so it was let's, on get, let's keep Forge facts where they the are. Time. Okay, so I, I believe it was on SourceForge at the time. Anyhow, Gavin Andreessen, Satoshi Nakamoto himself, Gavin was nice enough to then share access to other people. Those other people revoked his access without his consent. Under no, the they, guys they, 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 were they, were, they didn't revoke his access to, to, to add code to Bitcoin. They revoked his access to approve code to be included in the actual published repository. Without his permission. He was the one that had had uh, that permission given to him directly from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Mm, I guy, mean, I, I just established that that's not true. He didn't get permission from Satoshi. Satoshi left when Gavin went to the CIA, and Satoshi never and had Sato a GitHub account. Satoshi asked Gavin. Satoshi very clearly handed over the project to Gavin. I don't think that's indisputable. And if anybody disagrees with us, they, they're why would you want to even use something, something where somebody could hand the project over to somebody? There's no, there's no concept of that. It's not it, the project as a whole. It's, nobody controls Bitcoin. That's why we're here arguing about it. If, if somebody controlled Bitcoin and could make everything happen, there wouldn't be any point in us arguing with it. That person would do whatever the heck they want. So, right. Yeah. And all right. So let's move on. I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much, but I do think it's important that, you know, we, we talk about what core actually is. Um, and, and I that. think that's fine. Although I'd like to add one final point. So whatever the initial politics were, Gavin then shared his access with other people. Those other people then revoked his access under the guise of being concerned that his account had been hacked. Mm -hmm. Had been hacked, they never restored his access. That seems that, uh, that wasn't the only reason. Moved from, from, that was what. As far as I know, there were other reasons. Um, they had been asking him to revoke it voluntarily for a while because he wasn't contributing anymore. And when you have somebody that has uh, high-level access like that, it, it creates a security problem if they're not even a contributor because you don't want to have everybody having a key if they're not using the key to your house, right? Okay. You want I, to collect I, under, I understand that argument, but at the same time. Uh, I don't think that that's the right way to go about it. So, yeah. Well, you know, in in the end, I think Gavin did do a lot to destroy his own reputation, and he did do a lot to let go of the value that he was bringing to Bitcoin by not contributing anymore and and focusing on contributing to things that were antagonistic. So, I you know, I think we disagree on those points as well. But I think the heart of the matter is let's talk about block size and and sure, I think that's and so we have, we have an hour left to go. So let's let's yeah. get to it for. I remember so, you saying that you wanted to, um, that you supported the Segwit2x fork. And I, I, I'm pretty sure you said that when it enabled that the Bitcoin.com and you would fully support it. Um, why didn't you? Um, so I, I guess we should stop and, and give the whole history there. So I, I wasn't able to attend the meeting in person where the New York agreement came to fruition. And the, the Segwit2x agreement was made there. Uh, one of the other Bitcoin.com team members was there. Um, I do my best to honor my agreements. So he was there as my proxy. I wouldn't have agreed to it if had I been there myself, but I, I wasn't there. He was there. But so we did. We followed through with that. We supported. I even made a bet for about six million dollars uh, publicly that I thought Segwit2x would. Uh, I supported it full on. All of our infrastructure was set to go. Uh, along with Segwit2x, and then uh, a bunch of people decided to cancel it at the last minute. Uh, and as we had announced previously, if Segwit2x were not to take place, we would start devoting all of our resources on Bitcoin.com to supporting Bitcoin Cash, which is exactly what we've started doing now. And that's been going on for, what, 10, 10 days now, or however long it's been since uh, Segwit2x was canceled. What ended up happening with that bet? I'm sorry, what ended? What ended up happening with the bet? Well, hopefully you guys can't hear it, but I, I took... To have bad time, there's a bunch of like jackhammering or construction going on next door. So if you can, it's not too bad. Don't worry about it. It, it sounds okay. But it yeah, makes well, it hard what, for me to hear you. Oh, I see. What happened with the bet? Did did somebody get resolved? How did it work? So in in the terms of the bet, if there were never, if the fork never took place, everybody just kept their coins. At this point, the the fork never took place. So everybody just kept their original coins. Hold those coins for for more Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Um, you got some controversy recently for the Bitcoin.com wallet. Um, I, people noticed that it was defaulting to creating a Bitcoin Cash wallet inside of the software, and they felt that, you know, and you are really big on saying you don't, you're against force and you're against fraud, right? And how do you, how do you see it as not fraudulent? To, to just take something and call it Bitcoin within the surface and then redefine it 
in small print that it's actually Bitcoin Cash. So I'm, I'm opening my Bitcoin.com wallet right here and hopefully it'll come through clear enough. And uh, here's what it looks like. And I don't know if, how well that comes through, but you can see very, very clearly it says Bitcoin Cash mm -hmm. and Bitcoin Wallet. But and to a newcomer, they don't know, they, they might not even know that it's two separate things. They might just think Bitcoin Cash is what it means when I put Bitcoin in my mobile wallet or something. Litecoin like, is, a, is just a lighter version of Bitcoin, so I, I, I don't think I, it's confusing. And If I search that app on the App Store, what's the title? I'll, 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 I'll do it right now. Maybe I can hold yeah, it. Yeah, we can hold it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's, the app's already installed on my phone, so I'm not searching for it uh, often, but let's, let's take a look. So. I'm going to guess it's called Bitcoin.com like, wallet. By Bitcoin.com. So how is that confusing? It's a Bitcoin wallet and it's by Bitcoin.com. Right, but <laughs> what would you, how, if there were one that were a Bitcoin that wasn't Bitcoin Cash, how would I know the difference? How would you, how would you title them? This wallet supports Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Cash. So it's very clearly a Bitcoin wallet. It supports two of the like nine different versions of Bitcoin that are out there in the world. Yeah. Well, so like a big issue with, with, with the way that I had, the way that you promote the things that you support, you know, going back to classic and limited, et cetera, is that all our concern, all the contention that you see from the legacy Bitcoin or core Bitcoin or segwit Bitcoin, whatever you want to call it side, is we're concerned for the noobs. We're concerned for the people that are ignorant, that are coming into the space because you have a lot of marketing power that you put behind your actions. And we're worried about that people are going to come in through a confusing state, through a misinformed so state not, and not know not what's what. are concerned about the noobs losing $20 per transaction when they, they buy $50 of Bitcoin and they send it to their wallet and they only have $30 left. That's not concerning to you for new people? I mean, they're the... We can talk about fees separately. Let's really talk annoying. about. I want to talk about fees, but let's talk. But let's talk about that separately. Um, I think you know, that's, that's. I'm talking about. I'm talking about education. I'm talking about what people are presented with when they come. I'm not talking about whether we they're paying fees. They Here's my stance, and and you can you can pick it apart here. My stance is that Bitcoin Cash is the real true version of Bitcoin as outlined by Satoshi Nakamoto in the Bitcoin white paper as listed on Bitcoin.org, not even on .com. On the original Bitcoin.org website. Bitcoin Cash is the version of Bitcoin that most closely resembles the Bitcoin. So Bitcoin. How, how do you make How do you make that leap? Though, like, there's no mention of Bitcoin Cash. There's no mentioning of two megabytes being a requirement. There's no mention of anything to do with Bitcoin Cash. Is special uh, facets within the white paper. Like we can read the white paper together, and the title of the white paper is that it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. How is Bitcoin it's Cash peer-to-peer exactly. -peer and Bitcoin not? So I'll to tell you exactly how. So Bitcoin Cash allows you to send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. Ah, that last part is definitely not true. Because you are a smaller <laughs> network, you are easier to stop. That's the first point. Second how of all, the, the only reason your transactions, transactions are cheaper, the only reason your transactions are cheaper is because you don't have people spamming your network yet. When when your network becomes more value, so when, when you guys claim that people are spamming the Bitcoin.com, uh, I'm sorry, the Bitcoin core network, absolute absurdity. If people are paying a fee, definition, it's not spam. All right, I agree with you on that definition. The only way to differentiate spam from a real transaction is a fee, but it's still an attack vector. When you have very, very cheap fees or little to no fees, your Bitcoin cash is going to have the same problem as Bitcoin. You know, you're going to have people that are going to be able to fill it because nobody gives a shit. And how come Bitcoin never, ever, ever had uh, any of these problems until the blocks became full? Bitcoin was fantastic for the first seven years of Bitcoin experience. You could send and receive any amount of money anywhere instantly, basically for free. Most of the time it was free, and your transactions were always included in the very next block, and it had an amazingly wonderful user experience. And that led Bitcoin to grow from almost nothing to the worldwide phenomenon that it is today. Okay. And it wasn't until the blocks became full, which then caused the fees to become high, which then caused the, the transaction confirmation time to become unreliable, which made Bitcoin have a bad user experience. And that made Bitcoin drop from having nearly, you know, 100% market share, 50% market share that it is today. Um, well, all right, let's not paint that. Let's, let's talk about the market cap. Let's talk about the market cap. All, through all of the years of your complaining about Bitcoin scaling, one... All the developers were always working on scaling and adding things like SegWit and networking They've utterly, Bitcoin Core has completely and utterly failed. Bitcoin, how many more transactions can it do per second than it used to be able to do? 
It can do a lot with Lightning Network. It can do a lot with Segwit. When was the last people... time you did a Lightning Network transaction in Commerce? I, I've, I've never done one, but I do Segwit all the time. And I use Bitcoin all day, every day. I've never once done a Lightning Network transaction. And the amount of difficulty that it is for the entire ecosystem to switch from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum or Dash or Monero or take your pick is much, much, much smaller than the amount of effort and resources and retooling that's required for people to switch from making transactions to Bitcoin Core Lightning transactions. It's not going to make that jump uh, anytime soon, if ever. What's happening is Bitcoin is market cap and market share is just bleeding into altcoins like crazy. So the real how can you how can you say the market cap is bleeding? We we're like at ten thousand dollars now. You know, you started this because, campaign of wanting bigger what is, before we were even at a thousand, and it's ten it's ten x. And you're saying that people have a problem with Bitcoin because Bitcoin's market share used to be about ninety nine percent. Now it's about fifty three percent. Right, so it's lost half of its market share. Market shares now bled into altcoins. That should be terrifying to anybody that was a, a fan of Bitcoin, and that's why I've been so adamant about this issue. People, the Bitcoin core team have intentionally destroyed Bitcoin's usability. It costs more than ever before to make a Bitcoin transaction, and those transactions are less reliable than ever before. When things cost more and are less reliable, people seek out alternatives. And those alternatives that how did, are how did Bitcoin are Core do this? How did Bitcoin Core do it? By what did intentionally they do? capping the block size. So in the beginning of Bitcoin, blocks were maybe five kilobytes because not many people were using Bitcoin. And it had a, and the transactions went through and they were basically free and then really convenient and useful. So more people started to use Bitcoin. There were more Bitcoin transactions every day, and the blocks grew from five kilobytes to 10 kilobytes and more and more people started to use Bitcoin and then they grew to 50 kilobytes and 100 kilobytes then half a megabyte and then three quarters of a megabyte and then okay wait wait, wait. let's megabyte. pause for a second first of all core didn't exist when the block limit was put in it didn't have that name it didn't have that organization so don't Do blame core agree? so you can't so you can't say core did something to Bitcoin because all core ever did was add features the block size limit. They never, they, for, so you're saying that they Open should it. have done something I'm saying that the I, I guess here's what I'm saying two things so I'm saying that the block size limit should have never been put in in the first place it should have been kept in place so and you disagree with Satoshi in, no even Satoshi you saying that Satoshi didn't want the block size limit to be increased he put the block size limit there because other people advocated that he do that as a temporary temporary that's the key word there temporary uh, measure to prevent uh, people from from flooding the network Okay, let's move on a little bit. Talked about temporary. No, no, no. no. Uh, we, we should finish each, each subject one at a time until we oh, have sure. it done and clear. It. And if we run out of time today, I'd be happy to spend another hour or two uh, tomorrow okay, or later fine. this week. I just wanted to I make sure we we're run out of time today. Well. So what do you think I'm missing? What did, what did you want me to comment on on that? So clear in Satoshi's own words, he said that the ultimate solution is to allow the blocks to get as big as they need to be uh, in order to accommodate the, the people using Bitcoin. And that's the way that Bitcoin grew for the first you know, seven or eight years of Bitcoin's existence. And it worked to grow Bitcoin from nothing into a worldwide phenomenon. And but the block size never changed block. in those seven or eight years. You're saying that Absolutely you know, did. they allowed it to grow. It stayed the same. No, it, the, the limit so stayed the same. Never changed. The actual size did change. Change it changed from five kilobytes to ten kilobytes to fifty kilobytes. Oh, you mean the amount of people, the amount of space being utilized changed. Right. So effectively, for the first seven or eight years of Bitcoin, there was effectively no block size limit because the blocks never, ever, ever actually. I mean, this were is one that's awfully conveniently semantic for you to say that the limit was always there, and sometimes and anybody the could have spammed it. Was infinite. Don't don't you remember Satoshi Dice and how he was using the, the blockchain? To, he was quote unquote spamming. Satoshi the Dice was one of the best things to ever happen to Bitcoin. It was one of the most successful businesses ever uh, for Bitcoin. Look at how many people. I didn't ask you how successful it is. We're talking about how before when they had cheap transactions, they were able to to do every every dice roll on the on the chain, and eventually it became too expensive thing? for them, right? You don't think I don't th that was a good thing? I, um, I, I, I don't think it was a feasible thing because so I have a question for you. Um, do you want people using Bitcoin in commerce? What what is your goal with Bitcoin? Why are you involved with Bitcoin? What are you trying to accomplish? Please please tell me. First of all, I'm not trying to get anybody to do anything with Bitcoin. I know what I like about Bitcoin and I want to protect what Bitcoin is. I don't want to tell me for, what you like adoption. and what you want to protect it. I like that it is decentralized, permissionless, um, and that you know I, I have nobody that can take it from me. It's mine. It's it's financial freedom. I like it as a store of value. I like it as a way to have more private money. Um, and I don't. And I like it that it's not inflationary. So I like. So are a bunch of alt altcoins also meet those characteristics? 
Oh uh, yeah, sure they do. I don't have a problem with altcoins. So um, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm trying to achieve with, with Bitcoin. So what I'm trying to achieve with Bitcoin is create a form of money that everybody on the entire planet can use without needing for permission from governments or banks or corporations or anybody at all. And eventually I want to see Bitcoin replace the dollar and the euro and the yen and make it so it's impossible for governments to control money because free trade benefits everybody. And the best way to have more free trade around the world is to have a, a money that's free for people to use without needing permission. Okay, so, so, so you, want you want it to be permissionless. You want it to be not, you want it to be decentralized so a government can, can't control it. Would you agree with that? I think a lot of people get confused and they think that decentralization is a goal in and of itself. I don't think that decentralization is a goal in and of itself. I think decentralization is simply a tool that we use to achieve censorship resistance. And as long as we have enough decentralization to have that censorship resistance, that's enough. We don't need Bitcoin to be- How do, how do we know how much is enough? I've never ever heard of anybody having their on-chain transaction censored other than on Bitcoin Core because the fees are too high and your transaction might get the drop from the mempool. I don't know of anybody who's ever had their transaction censored well, that depends on how you define a censored transaction, um, because I know that like there there have been block rollbacks where where there are some miners that have lost block rewards because uh, miners with more hash power were able to rewind the chain a couple blocks. So there okay. there ha there has been censorship. Um, I don't know if you would count qualify that. And then when people pl apply external taint to the chain, say like at Coinbase using Coin Analytics and things like this, they have plenty ability to censor what you're doing, right? Well, that's the other problem with these full blocks, which cause the high fees and unreliable on-chain transactions, is it forces people or incentivizes people to use centralized uh, Bitcoin banks like Coinbase and Zappo and, and take your pick of those sorts of centralized services, which then they have complete with your money. They have complete control of your money. You're completely at their mercy. So that's a rising force in Bitcoin, whereas on Bitcoin Cash or other currencies where the where or cheap, fast, and reliable, you have no incentive to use these centralized uh, institutions. You mean no no incentive to use centralized institutions like Korean BitThumb, where people lost tons of money because during the top of the Bitcoin Cash pump, and they lost access because it was the only exchange that everybody was using? If you're using an exchange, you're at the risk of their exchange. But look at, look at Bitcoin... But you see the parallel I'm making, right? You're saying it doesn't happen in Bitcoin Cash, but it just happened in Bitcoin Cash, the same way you were worried about Which one do you think it's more likely to happen on, on one where people are using coin-based transactions? I believe the fee is free. If you do not try and do an on-chain transaction, you're looking at you know, $5, $10, $20 to, to do that. But the thing is, is I have a, a I have a Bitcoin business. business. We support SegWit deposits. We, we, you, you can withdraw. And the people okay. that do it pay cheap fees. So, you know, we pay cheap fees when people will play with us. So there is a solution. How many, how many coins do you accept for your, and I don't know how to pronounce your Zotica or, or how you Exotica. pronounce it? Sorry. Exotica. Spelling. <laughs> um, um, how, how, how many different, do you guys only accept Bitcoin Core or what? what we uh, only what accept Bitcoin accept? and nothing else. What do you think about the fact that all sorts of businesses that used to only accept Bitcoin and nothing else became full? which caused high fees and unreliable Bitcoin transactions. All these businesses like Coinbase and like blockchain.info and like a, a whole bunch of others at Bitcoin have now been busy. I know, I, I know exactly what I think. Why the hell don't they have SegWit working yet? Because it was easier for them I, to get We did it. Apparently. We, we, we are literally a three-person company. And okay. we, had, we had SegWit working. We, we had to add our own code even to make it work. And we had SegWit working within the first week that it was released. Okay. Um, and so I don't see any so maybe, reason why. And these people had months and months, maybe even a year or more to prepare to be able to implement SegWit uh, as a layer two scaling, which actually works a lot better as a scaling in philosophy. We're talking about exponential Okay, scaling. so let's talk about philosophy versus empirical evidence. So with Bitcoin, we have a seven or eight year track record of empirical evidence of what worked and worked incredibly well to grow Bitcoin. And that was on-chain scaling with the blocks going from five kilobytes to 50 no, no, kilobytes. No, 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 there, there was not on-chain scaling happening in that time period. Bitcoin didn't You're denying change. reality. Bitcoin did not change, so you what can't say something were the blocks in two thousand. Hold on, what size were the blocks in 2011? I don't know. One, right? Five, ten, no, maybe five kilobytes, ten kilobytes, somewhere in there. So you're talking, yeah, I don't know what block space was being used. Uh, in are, the, are the blocks today about a megabyte? But I also don't think it matters um, because there has to be a limit. Would you agree? No, I don't think that there has to be a limit. 
Why? You're the one claiming that there has to be a limit. Sure. The I'll tell you why there has to be a limit. Because why does there need to be a limit? Because there's infinite demand for block space. Would you agree? Uh, no. Why? It depends on the price that the miner set for the block space. But if there's, if you have, it's if you have infinite space, space if you have infinite space, everybody and their mother would do things like Satoshi Dice and fill the entire blockchain, and it would just become immensely, infinitely huge. It would be unmanageable. Do you think that the miners are going to mine an infinitely large block? No, I don't think they're going to mine. There's, there's some size. Answer. I don't know what size they will or won't mine, and I don't know what size right, we, will or won't propagate. We, we don't either know do what the right. And I don't claim that I know the right uh, amount what of block size. Well, you claim we're, that we're too. Here. You claim that too is better. I mean, you don't, know. You you don't, don't actually know. know. I don't. I tell you, I'm claiming that you don't know, and I don't know, and I'm saying that nobody knows what the right amount of block space to produce so is. So, in a situation what, where nobody knows, if you're trying to apply science and you know be responsible about technology, where a lot of people have a lot of value here, if there's all kinds of variables that nobody knows, what do you think is the best approach? Do you think it's a conservative one or a risky one? I, th I think the conservative one is the one that lets the market decide what the right amount of block space to produce is. And if you want to talk about conservative versus, can you name one single other uh, altcoin that has full blocks? It's um, never happened before in the entire history of the Bitcoin. I don't, I don't watch them. But this is a claim to fame. This is because everybody wants Bitcoin and everybody wants to use Bitcoin. And so but what's it's not risky. Hold on. Can, can, can I finish my point? And then I'll, I'll let you, I'll be quiet while you give your, your rebuttal. So it's never, ever, ever happened before in the entire history of cryptocurrencies, right? So now Bitcoin's the first cryptocurrency ever to have full blocks and to create a fee market and high fees and unreliable transactions. That's incredibly risky to have Bitcoin be the first one to experiment on uh, in this way. If you want to experiment with full blocks and high fees, we should be doing it on some little altcoin that nobody cares about rather than the market leader. And All right. You repeatedly paint things as if something is happening or there is action being taken that is causing harm. But all you're doing is describing things the way they always were. Don't make it sound like that we're, that people are doing something to Bitcoin, that we're running some kind of experiment by doing inaction. Doing inaction is not an experiment. It's leaving things the way they are. It's conservative, right? So don't paint so, it that way. So I, I guess my point is that in order to keep things the same, because there was effectively no block size limit first seven or eight years of existence. So in order to keep that no, the same... There was, there was never effectively no black size limit. Stop saying that. It, there it was, was never, it's ever... Protocol. It's like you can, you can find it in the code. It's there. The effectively no, no block size limit because the blocks were never, ever, ever one megabyte until just recently. That you, I don't think you understand what effectively means. It was not effectively that because if it was effectively infinite, people would have effectively made it infinite. They would have used it. There wasn't, there wasn't even one megabyte worth of block space demand in the market up until very recently. Otherwise, the blocks would have been one megabyte a long time ago. So the fact that the blocks were always 5 or 10 or 50 kilobytes means that there wasn't infinite demand for block space, even back when the block space was free, most of the transactions for free. And just very recently, the blocks became full. And Bitcoin's the first currency to ever have that happen to. That's incredibly reckless. And in any other business, if a team of developers are hired to solve a problem, and then it failed and failed this incredibly miserably, uh, miserably and caused the entire network to be backed up and congested and less reliable than ever before, they would be fired. And that's exactly what's happening in the Bitcoin ecosystem as a whole. Businesses Why do you like think Bitcoin.com, blockchain.info, Coinbase, take your pick, are all busy integrating Bitcoin Cash because it works and it works the same way that Bitcoin did for the first seven or eight years of Bitcoin's history. And if people want to keep using Bitcoin Core, that's just fine. More power to them. Feel free to pay your $20 and wait two days for your transaction to get confirmed. If you want fast, cheap, reliable transactions that work exactly how Bitcoin used to work for its first seven or eight years of history, that's Bitcoin Cash. And that's why we're oh, seeing wait, wait, a mass... I think you need to be careful to calling cash. Bitcoin Cash reliable. Um, you know, you have these, you have your difficulty swings where you're processing, I don't know, 50 blocks in one day, inflating it way past uh, the rate of Bitcoin, of uh, the original Bitcoin. Less than 1% um, difference. So what, you're okay with inflation? I prefer to have less inflation rather than more, but the amount of inflation... You prefer to have less. Rate. Why doesn't Bitcoin Cash have less inflation than Bitcoin? Bitcoin Cash currently has the same inflation schedule as Bitcoin Core. Uh, then why are there so many more of uh, Bitcoin Cash tokens than Bitcoin tokens? 
for a short period of time, Bitcoin Cash managed to suck away a whole bunch of the hash rate from Bitcoin Core, which should be terrifying for Bitcoin Core supporters. What happens if Bitcoin Cash continuously is more profitable to mine the Bitcoin Core and more and more miners switch away from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Cash? And instead of the Bitcoin Core blocks, that are only one megabyte each being every 10 minutes uh, apart, they become every 20 minutes or every 30 minutes. So Bitcoin Core's throughput capacity gets cut in half or cut uh, by, by a third. Well, any any any, uh, holder. any shift in mining hash power is going to affect either chain, um, and it affects your <laughs> chain more than it's affecting Bitcoin currently. So don't paint it as if what's oh my god what's wrong with Bitcoin because right now Bitcoin yes, Cash with is that. wild, so. and it, and you're printing more coins. and And I want to bring up something else about Bitcoin Cash that I don't think anybody else really brings up. But when you reset the difficulty to be lower. Um, when you, I, I forget what you're calling your, your algorithm stuff, EDA and such. When you reset that difficulty to, to be a lower value, it allows miners to reuse old work that would have been invalid on Bitcoin. So they can spam blocks and they can re get block rewards without doing the same amount of work. And when you do it, when, and when you fork again to fix that algorithm and reset the difficulty again, you repeatedly give them the opportunity to reuse old work like that. So your, so your chain allows ASIC boost, it allows malleability, and it allows reusing of work. So, so how so, are so you, you some pretty big disadvantages? Mm -hmm. Oh, and it has higher inflation. Um, so tell me how it's that's just there's just under 17 million Bitcoin core coins and just under 17 million uh, Bitcoin cash coins. The two chains is about 120,000, which is way less than 1%. It's, I'd, I'd have to get out the calculator, but way less than 1%, right? So the U.S. you know dollar inflation is way more than 1% per year. So to harp is on that, the Is that your benchmark is, is the dollar? I hope not. Um, uh, but almost all that inflation came in two specific periods in which Bitcoin cash had way, way, way more hash rate for a very short period of time. Uh, I think the current uh, but difficulty... But this is expected is behavior. Like, like if, if there's a coin that people can mine on the same hash at this point, like no shots... If there's two shot to 256 coins and somebody's overpaying for one of them, everybody should expect the miners to go there because miners are mining for profit. They aren't mining idealistically. If they have an opportunity to make more money, they're going to make it. So when you go and you convert whatever amount of Bitcoins you converted to Bitcoin Cash and you pump the price, that's demand and they see it and they're going to come back and they're going to come and give you your demand. They're going to say, okay, I'll mine your coin if you want to overpay for it. But eventually, What's the we're going to. There is no problem with that at all. Okay. Um, uh, buy whatever coin you want and fund whatever miner you want. There's no problem with that at all. We agree. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Let's move on to the next point. Well, I, I guess if we, I can elaborate on that point that we do agree on, is that more and more businesses are going to start to use Bitcoin Cash. More and more Bitcoin Cash happening around the world. More and more people will be using it in commerce. And as that happens, more and more people will start to use Bitcoin Cash as a store of value. And once Bitcoin Cash consistently is more profitable to mine than Bitcoin Core, more and more of that hash rate will switch over to Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin Core can adjust fast enough on Bitcoin Core that its throughput capacity will be even more limited than it is today, which will make it even less usable than it is today, which will drive even more people to use Bitcoin Cash. And I see that there's I would guess that there's a more likely than not chance that Bitcoin Cash will eventually suck away all of Bitcoin Core's hash rate and all of Bitcoin Core's uh, commerce that's happening in the world. I think that that's more likely you, than you not. Say this like Bitcoin Cash is doing something new. We've had the only difference between Bitcoin Cash and every altcoin that's tried to do what you're doing is that it used a proof of stake sort of 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 holders for the tokens, copied it, and made a fork. It's still no different than any other altcoin. All of these altcoins can say the same thing you're saying. You're saying, and oh, I everybody's going to use us because we're faster. Look, like, what's how is Bcash better than Litecoin? Let's put, let's say that. How is Bitcoin Cash better than Litecoin? Is that yeah. Bitcoin Cash has a much, much, much larger user base? It has more merchant adoption. It has more businesses using it. it has show more me, show me this. Where is this user base? How do you measure? How are you measuring this? Okay, so for anybody out there, go over to CoinMarketCap.com. Our trade volume for Bitcoin Cash uh, was just under two billion with a B, two billion dollars. Are there any uh, zero fee uh, exchanges included in that total? Uh, I'd have to check. I would guess that there probably are. But then that is, you, it's absolutely unusable, right? Would you agree that if there are no, no fee, it's unusable? I don't, I don't say it's unusable. So here's, here's why. So using round, roundish numbers. You don't remember when China was doing zero fee and the, the volumes were like through the roof. And okay, as soon as the so here's the question for you. Change, the volumes went down to nothing. You don't question remember that? that? I'm, I'm checking right now. So give me, give me one second on the markets for Litecoin. 
So Bit BitThumb is one of those with zero fees. I, I'm guessing I, I'm not a super expert when it comes to Bit BitThumb. I'm pretty sure that it has zero fee. Okay, so BitThumb also has Litecoin trading. BitThumb has Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash trading. Yet Bitcoin Cash is having about two billion dollars a day in volume on the exchanges, whereas Litecoin is having about four hundred million dollars a day. So, so we'll Bitcoin agree Cash that, has more that, than that, five that. times as much economic uh, transactions happening on exchanges than, than Litecoin. So there's a well, no, no, because right we, we're trying to start with a with a premise here that we can't use a volume transaction number that has zero fee wash trading available right disagree with that premise because both Bit, both litecoin and bitcoin cash roger you traded. disagree with every premise that allows you to be able to use civil attacks and spam like you that's what you do you use your marketing you get a bunch of socks to re-like and retweet everything that you're doing you upvote and downvote whatever you I'd like to, i'd like to address that too so that's that's an absolute lie and i take offense to people claim that i'm using sock puppets to do whatever i've never ever paid any sort of social media company to do any sort of astroturfing at all ever you have somebody, we, you have the birds thing that literally does that yeah birds is a public platform where anybody can post anything and promote anything that they want on there so uh peter todd had a bunch of tweets that were being promoted on there right is he an astroturfer no anybody can post their tweets up there and have it uh, retweeted for and that was my one point, of the most no, my, powerful my marketing isn't whether or not there. And a bunch of core trolls had it complained is, to twitter and had it taken offline you created a very you created a platform to obfuscate whether anybody could see that you were doing this or not you could use your own platform to fund it but the, and and you you're the you are the person you are a cheerleader of bcash so people point at you as as somebody that would be the source of insulting this. me i'm not interested in continuing on this it's bitcoin cash get it straight and if you do that again i'm going to end the interview because i'm not interested in being insulted okay i'm i'm promoting bitcoin cash if it's I not an insult bitcoin, why do you have to take it personally it's just a name i actually like I'm it better insulted here i'm being insulted i don't need to be insulted by you i, I have enough money i was a self-made multi-millionaire before i ever got involved in bitcoin i don't need to have my buttons pushed by people like you on the internet it's bitcoin cash Roger. The only reason you want to call it Bitcoin Cash is because you want to co-opt the brand. I think Bitcoin Cash has a more legitimate claim to being the Bitcoin that was outlined in the Bitcoin.org website at this point. So yes, that's my position. So you, you and personally just want, you want people to think that it's Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin. Read my lips. You know, it's Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin, we all know what the real Bitcoin is. Bitcoin, we can have a conversation is Bitcoin. if we didn't know what Bitcoin was. Like, you can't just go you redefining and undefining all things. There's no, even if Bitcoin Cash becomes more valuable in market cap and more volume provably than Bitcoin, it's still not Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin Cash. I agree on that point. It's the longest chain with the most proof of work. And if Bitcoin Cash manages to do that, no, it very no. clearly longest chain, the, the longest chain the reason why that was ever explained was for was for determining uh, which chain was the correct chain within the same protocol. When you change the protocol and you make an incompatible protocol, the whole longest chain thing is not what he was talking about when he was talking about that. He's just talking about how it resolves problems within the current network. But you made a new network. There's no longest uh, anything. I disagree. I mean, uh, let's get some fun stats. Didn't like Namecoin pass both of them because of merge mining or something? Is Namecoin the real Bitcoin? I, I don't know. I don't have an opinion on there. So let's talk about some interesting stats for the market, right? So over the last week, Bitcoin Core is up 16%. Bitcoin Cash is up 37%. Up 66%. Up 368%. And over the last three months, it's up 137%. 229 percent so it won't take too much more time like this with bitcoin cash consistently outperforming bitcoin core until bitcoin cash has a bigger market uh, cap than bitcoin core and i think that that's going to happen on pretty short order because bit world's number one bitcoin wallet in the entire world support for bitcoin cash is coming by the end of this year uh, coinbase has announced that full support for bitcoin cash is coming already added full support for Bitcoin Cash to their wallet and their Block Explorer. The only piece of that puzzle left is their merchant services platform. And when you have two versions of Bitcoin, one that has Bitcoin Cash that's fast, cheap, and reliable, and you have Bitcoin Core that's slow, expensive, and unreliable. Don't call it unreliable because if you pay the fee, you'll get in. That's the same standard. If you pay the fee, you get in.
Um, the question is, is that people are willing to pay a higher fee on Bitcoin because it is more valuable and more secure. So I've been paying a higher fee on Bitcoin Core because uh, that's what it takes to get my transaction to an exchange so I can sell it for more Bitcoin Cash. So, Do you uh, still have Bitcoins? Some Bitcoins, yeah. Why? Because it's stupid to put all your eggs in one basket. And I hear uh, Adam back and it sounds like you're getting at the same thing. Like, why don't you sell 100% of your Bitcoins? Uh, that would be stupid. Why would you I'm, not, I'm not getting at anything. I, I'm just interested to know because for somebody that's so emphatic, you know, I, I would expect that. I, I would expect maybe, those. Maybe I'm wrong. You, right? I mean, you said Bitcoin is broken. You, you, you hate everything that they've done to it. Quote, you, know, you, you think that people are attacking it or, or throttling it, whatever you think. But you still hold it. It makes no sense. I think Bitcoin's usability has been incredibly, incredibly, incredibly damaged and intentionally damaged by replacing. It's by still useful to you. Full block possibly. Uh, hold on, but what Bitcoin Core still does have is this huge, huge network effect of all these wallets and merchant processors and name recognition around the world. It has a huge network effect, and that network effect is very, very important uh, and very, very useful as well. Cash has to overcome that network effect, but I think it will. But How it, uh, is the network effect time, useful to you? Right. Like, and I still don't understand why you hold Bitcoins if you hate it so much. It makes I'll tell no sense. you why. So I started selling some Bitcoins when they're, I don't know, 6000 something dollars each recently for, for more Bitcoin cash and things like that. Now Bitcoin Core is 9000 and something dollars each. So I have you know an extra 30% or so uh, because yeah, I didn't and, sell and, them. and you could have just left them all in Bitcoin and just kept going up. And well, I with the amount of Bitcoin, Bitcoin that people think you have, that. with the amount of Bitcoin people think you have and the amount that you may have spent on Bcash, you're going to have more... Uh, I would like more, an apology at this point. It's not Bcash, it's Bitcoin Cash. Look, it's it's what I call it. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's it's just so easy. It's it's a nice name. Okay. It really is. This interview is over. I don't need to be insulted. I was a self-made millionaire before I even got involved in Bitcoin. Now I have even Who more money Who cares if you're a millionaire? It has nothing to do with anything. I don't need to be insulted by some person on the internet. What's your gross annual revenue for Exotica? None of your business. Isn't it? Less than a million dollars, huh? It has nothing to do your with this conversation. Your annual revenue is less than a million dollars. So that of means course. you don't know how to run a successful business. Of course. We do more than a million dollars in sales. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not a business, days. Roger. We're not running a business here. Bitcoin there is you know, so. Bitcoin is changing money. It's, it's decentralized. The world for the better. Not You're playing around with your little porno site. What's wrong with the porno but, site? You don't like, you don't, you have a problem there, with sex now? A I'm trying to change the entire world for the better by giving every single human being on the planet the ability to have complete control of their own finances. And you're here insulting what I'm trying to do, calling names and calling my projects names. And then you don't have any real world. I called it literally a name, not an insult. And now it's you're the one trying to insult me for the type of work that I do. Yeah, I see nothing wrong with sex. I see nothing wrong with people nope. entertaining themselves. But people selling whatever porn they want on the internet, I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm a libertarian and a voluntarist. I think it's great for the girls. It's great for the guys. Everybody's happy. Or if it's guys and guys or guys and girls, whatever you, know, whatever you want to get involved <laughs> there, I have no problem with that whatsoever. So so I'm, I'm not approved when it comes to that. But uh, I don't think it's okay to insult people, right? If I started calling your website, I don't, which, no, no, correct no. pronunciation, Exotica. If I started calling it Stupotica, you would take offense to that. Uh, where, where is? Yeah, but you, you're adding the word "stupid" in there. Where did I add an insult when I say "bcash"? I'm just abbreviating to make it easy to say. It's not like personal. I'm There's no personal you, aspect to it. The order of, of Bitcoin Cash doesn't like it being called Bcash. So I'm asking you nicely, and I asked you politely. Isn't that kind of indicative? That's kind of indicative of how centralized it could be. If if every like there are only a few people that even care. It's like you and Jahan. And then everybody else and doesn't everybody give a else. shit. There's only two types of people that call it Bcash. They're people that have been brainwashed by this social media attack uh, to call it Bcash. And I, I implore anybody who watches this to go out and Google uh, why Bitcoin Cash is called Bcash. And uh, Yonald Fukbal, or however you pronounce his difficult name, wrote a fantastic essay uh, explaining exactly what's going on there. It's a social media attack to try and confuse people about what Bitcoin Cash is. And so there's only two people that call it Bcash. It's people that are trying to engage in that social manipulation, or it's people that have been manipulated and brainwashed by that social manipulation. And I don't think you're the one that one of the people that's been socially brainwashed. Uh, I think you're one of the ones trying to do that brainwashing. And so I don't appreciate it. I'm not going to stand for it. Uh, life is busy. Life is short. Okay. I don't need to be I, standing I, here. I, I'm going to I'm going to that I. I'm going to mirror rebuttal the same comment. I think that there are only three people that want to call Bitcoin Cash Bitcoin Cash. You and Jahan. And your sock puppets, okay? Because there's there's nobody Goodbye. else. I've never hired a single sock puppet. I don't need to be insulted. But please post cash, this to the cash, entire world cash, to see cash, how cash. incredibly rude you are to me. Hey, I'm sorry, man.
All right, guys, it's over. For those of you that bet that Roger would rage quit, congratulations. Thanks for watching. Adios.